Hi there, everybody. This is your full staff football reporter, Bob Kelly, with highlight pictures of the 1957 Los Angeles Rams. In this film, you will watch the Rams against their arch rivals, the San Francisco 49ers, who tied for the Western Conference Championship, the world champion Detroit Lions, the Eastern Conference champs, the Cleveland Browns, as well as the strong contending Baltimore Colts and the Green Bay Packers. In 1957, the Rams became the greatest attraction in the history of football. Yes, they were the first team ever to play before over a million spectators in one season. Paul Staff, who brings you all the Ram games on radio and on television, takes pleasure in presenting this 30-minute film of the world's greatest stars in the world's greatest spectator sport, National League football. The Rams journey to San Francisco for their second league encounter to meet their arch rivals, the 49ers. The Rams had defeated Philadelphia in their league opener, while the 49ers had been upset by the Chicago Cardinals. Los Angeles had all but annihilated San Francisco in a preseason game. The big crowd at Keysar knew from past experience that anything can happen when these two great teams meet. Early in the first quarter, Tom Wilson swung wide at right end, and with the aid of a key block by Dwayne Putnam, rambled for 23 yards before Bob Holliday tripped him up. Our field camera picks up the action as Wilson again races around right end. Goes 21 yards to a touchdown to give the Rams a 7-0 lead. In the second quarter, the 49ers scored uh, two points on a safety. And then quarterback Tittle rifled a pass to Connors, who lateraled to Billy Wilson. And the 49er flash raced to a touchdown to give the 49ers a 9-7 lead. Late in the second quarter, Tittle faked the handoff, then passed short to Joe Perry. And behind Ted Connolly's blocking, the jet roared downfield for 17 yards. Keep your eye on this play as Tittle throws long to R.C. Owen, who literally steals the ball from Don Burroughs in the end zone for a spectacular touchdown to send the 49ers into a 16-7 lead. In the third quarter, Ram quarterback Norm Van Brocklin passed over the middle to Leon Clark. And the big end went 70 yards to a touchdown. And this made the score 49ers 16, Rams 14. Late in the third quarter, Van Brocklin passed short to John Arnett. And the rookie star eluded Val Joe Walker, raced 73 yards for an apparent touchdown, but the officials ruled that he had stepped out of bounds. The Ram attack bogged down on the 13-yard line early in the fourth quarter. So Paige Cochran kicked the field goal from the 20-yard line to move the Rams into a 17-16 lead. The Rams extended their lead to 20-16 as Cochran added another field goal later. As we pick up the action, Gene Babb fights his way for 14 yards and a first down in Ram territory. Hugh McElhaney drives off the right side for four more yards. With time running out, Tittle fired a pass to Connor for 11 yards to move the ball to the Ram 12-yard line. Keep your eye on this play as Tittle rolls out to his right, then fires a pass to R.C. Owen. And the 49er rookie sensation out jumps the Ram defenders for the game-winning touchdown. Final score, 49ers 23, Rams 20. Back home after a rugged road trip, the Rams entertained the powerful Detroit Lions. The Motor City 11, who defeated Los Angeles and Detroit two weeks earlier, were looking for another victory, which would keep them on top of the Western Conference standings. 
The Lions with their great quarterback, Bobby Lane, Tobin wrote, this day had to cope with Norm Van Brocklin, who possibly had his finest game of the season, completing 10 of 14 passes. We start action in the first quarter. As Ram quarterback Van Brocklin drops back, throws a swing pass to Tank Younger, and the big fullback storms down the left side for 16 yards and a first down on the Lions' nine-yard line. Again, the Dutchman calls on Younger as he goes over the right side for five more yards. With Ken Panfill and Bob Boyd clearing the way, Younger goes through the right side for five yards and a touchdown. And the Rams lead 7-0. Later in the first quarter, Van Brocklin faded back, fired a perfect pass to Leon Clark for 14 yards to move the ball into scoring position. With Dwayne Putnam clearing the way, Younger bolts around left end for nine yards. Behind the tremendous surge of the Ram offensive line, Tommy Wilson slants off the left side all the way to the one-yard line. Quarterback Van Brocklin goes into the end zone on a quarterback sneak for another Ram touchdown. Rams 14, Lions nothing. Our field camera picks up the action as Joe Marconi goes over the middle for five yards. With the aid of a key block by Ron Weller, Joe Marconi goes around the left side for 30 yards before he is finally forced out of bounds on the Lions' 35-yard line. Mixing his attack well, Van Brocklin throws a swing pass to Ron Waller for 16 yards and a first down as the first quarter ends. Behind the blocking of Dwayne Putnam, Waller circles left end for 15 more yards to set up another Ram touchdown. On fourth down, Van Brocklin sneaked over from the one-yard line to extend the Rams' lead to 21 to nothing. Late in the second quarter, the Lions started rolling as Bobby Lane fired a quick pass to Jim Duran that was good for 21 yards and a first down on the Ram one-yard line. This time, Lane handed off to Gene Gedman, who went through the middle for a touchdown. The Rams now lead 21-7. The Lions added a field goal later, and in the third quarter, with Tobin Rode at quarterback, he carries the ball around left end, then laterals to John Henry Johnson, a gain of 15 yards. Quarterback Rope drops back, fires a quick pass to Jerry Reichow, who fights his way into the end zone for a Detroit touchdown. Now, Rams 21, Lions 17. In the fourth quarter, Rope fired a pass that was intended for Reichow, but it was intercepted by Jesse Whittenden on the Lion 40. He made a beautiful return of 31 yards to move the ball deep into Detroit territory. Rams hit pay dirt again on this play as Van Brocklin connected on a strike to Leon Clark for 14 yards and a touchdown. And the Rams now led 28 to 17. Keep your eye on this play as Bobby Lane fires a pass intended for John Henry Johnson. But the ball deflects off the big fullback helmet, is intercepted by Dick Gordy, who goes all the way for a Los Angeles touchdown. And the final score, 
Rams 35, Lions 17. History was made on this beautiful November day in Los Angeles. 102,368 fans. Largest crowd ever to see a professional football game. We're on hand at the Coliseum to see if the Rams could upset the league-leading San Francisco 49ers. Another estimated 15,000 fans were turned away. It was the rubber game of the Rams 49er annual three-game series. Each team held a win. The Rams won the preseason game, San Francisco the first league encounter. Early in the first quarter, Van Brockton fired a perfect pass to Bob Boyd for 17 yards and a first down on the 49er 15-yard line. Striking fast, the Ram quarterback connected on another pass to Boyd, who went into the end zone for a Los Angeles touchdown. And the Rams were off to an early 7-0 lead. The 49ers came right back as Y.A. Tittle, the quarterback, almost trapped, completed a pass to Billy Wilson for 13 yards and a first down in Ram territory. Now Tittle rifles the pass to Hugh McElhaney in the end zone for a 49er touchdown. And the score is tied at 7-7. Seven seven. Rookie John Arnett takes the handoff from Van Brocklin, goes through the middle for two yards. Keeping the 49ers on the run, the Dutchman hits Elroy Hirsch with a pass that was good for 16 yards before he was forced out of bounds on the 12-yard line. This time, Van pitches off to Arnett, who goes around the right side for seven more yards. The ball on the one-yard line, Big Tank Younger crashes over left guard for a touchdown. in front, 14 to 7. Watch the key block by all pro guard Dwayne Putnam. The 49ers had added a field goal. Hank Younger circles left end, rambles for 29 yards to midfield. The passing combination of Van Brockton to Bob Boyd is one of the most feared of the National League. Here they team up on a 50-yard scoring pass. Extended their lead to 21 to 10. The Rams recovered a 49er fumble. As we pick up the action, John Arnett circles right in for 11 yards. This time, Van Brocklin rifles a pass to Hurst. 14 yards and a first down on the 49ers' four yard line. Behind the tremendous charge of the Ram offensive line, John Arnett goes over the left side for four yards and a touchdown. The Rams now lead 28 to 10. Later in the quarter, after a 49er drive stalled, they lined up in field goal formation. But Joe Arena scooped up the ball, fired a pass downfield to Charlie Powell for 27 yards and a first down on the Ram eight-yard line. This time, Tittle handed off to Gene Babb, who fought his way over the right side for six yards to the one-yard line. On the third down, Y.A. Tittle leaps over the middle for a San Francisco touchdown. For now, Rams 28, 49ers 17. In the third quarter, Tittle handed off to Joe Arena, who swung wide to his right, then threw a long pass to Clyde Connor for a touchdown. To narrow the gap to Rams 28, 49ers 24. In the fourth quarter, Ron Waller circled right in for 13 yards to move the ball deep into 49er territory. Our field camera picks up the action in this play as Waller takes the pitch out and circles right in for three more yards. Joe Marconi caps the scoring for the day as he drives over the left side for a Los Angeles touchdown to make the final score. 
Rams 37, 49ers 24. Well, after that exciting game, let's call timeout for a moment and ask the old pro to give us another football demonstration and some good advice on Paul Staff. Today, fans, the true art of the plate kick. Boy Elwood here will demonstrate. Look at that knee action. Uh, now, Elwood, when I say kick, you lost the ball nicely. Speaking of place kicks, when you walk in a place that serves Falstaff beer, you've got no kick coming. Uh, 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 oh. Falstaff beer, right beer anywhere, Falstaff beer. Brews the special care, smooth and golden, bright and clear. America's premium quality beer. Sing out now. You'll go, go, go for Falstaff. Rams versus Green Bay at Milwaukee County Stadium. Los Angeles needed a victory over the Packers to propel themselves once again into the thick of the Western Division race. Behind 24-3 at halftime, the Rams staged one of the greatest second-half comebacks in NFL history. We start action in the first quarter with Green Bay on the long end of a 3-0 score. Don McElhaney cuts back around the right side for 16 yards and a Packer first down. With Bart Starr at quarterback, he hands off to Paul Horning, who goes over the left side for 21 more yards before he is brought down by Dell Schaffner. With beautiful faking, Starr connects on a pass to McElhaney for 14 yards and a Green Bay touchdown to send the Packers into a 10 to nothing lead. In the second quarter, Van Brocklin rifled a pass to Elroy Hurst for nine yards to move the ball to the scoring position. After three plays fail, Paige Cosman kicked a 12-yard field goal to make it Packers 10, Rams 3. The Babe Perilli now at quarterback. He drops back, lost a long pass to Billy Helton, and a play that carried 47 yards to the Rams' seven-yard line. The Packers hit pay dirt on this play, and Al Carmichael powered his way around the right side for a touchdown to send the Packers into a 17-3 lead. The Packers were having a field day as Forrester, a linebacker, intercepted a Van Brocklin pass, ran like a halfback as he returned the ball to midfield, then lateral to Bobby Dillon, who ran all the way to another touchdown to rocket the Packers into a 24-3 lead. Van Brocklin fired a long pass to Elroy Hurst that was good for 45 yards and a first down on the Packers 20-yard line. With pinpoint accuracy, the Dutchman connected on a pass to Bob Boyd for 20 yards and a touchdown. To make the score, Packers 24, Rams 10. Later in the period, Van Brocklin hit Hurst with a pass for 11 yards. Van sets up the next Ram touchdown with this hook pass to Bob Boyd. Hank Younger caps the drive with a one-yard scoring burst to narrow the gap to Packers 24, Rams 17. One of the prize rookies of the 1957 season was FC's John Arnett. Here the Rams flash takes the handoff from Van Brocklin, takes off two tacklers then races 68 yards to a touchdown to tie the score at Rams 24, Packers 24. Later in the fourth quarter, Van Brocklin punted to Al Carmichael. The Packers star weaved his way for 48 yards to move the ball into Ram territory before he is finally brought down by Tom Wilson, Norm Van Brocklin, and Big Glenn Holston. With Furley at quarterback, he drops back to pass, then decides to run, goes for 10 yards to the Rams' 25-yard line, and looks for the vicious bone-rattling tackle by Les Richter.
On fourth down, Fred Cohn kicked a 32-yard field goal. The move the Packers back out in front, 27 to 24. With time running out in the fourth quarter, Ron Water cut back around left end for 13 yards to move the ball into Packer territory. With one minute and 11 seconds left to play, Sam Brocklin dropped back and then fired a perfect strike to Lamar Lundy for 34 yards and the Rams winning touchdown. Final score, Rams 31, Packers 27. It was a bitter cold day in Cleveland, Ohio, but the hottest thing on the football field was the Brown sensational rookie fullback, Jim Brown of Syracuse, who was to set a new NFL rushing record for a single game. In the first quarter, a Van Brocklin pass went astray as Galen Fisk picked it off and returned the ball 15 yards. The Browns dented the scoreboard early as Luke Carpenter broke through the left side, raced 23 yards for a Cleveland touchdown to send the Browns into a 7 to nothing lead. In the second quarter, with Tommy O'Connell at quarterback, he drops back, throws the pass, but it is intercepted on a diving catch by Don Burroughs on the Brown 22-yard line. Van Brocklin started the Rams on their way as he rifled a bullet pass to Elroy Hirsch for a touchdown. And this tied the score at 7-7. Seven to seven. The league's leading ground gainer for the 57th season was Jimmy Brown. Here apparently trapped, he takes off, streaks for 69 yards, and a Cleveland touchdown. Set the Browns into a 14-7 lead. Endeavoring to keep pace, Van Brocklin connected on a pass to Boyd for 15 yards in the Cleveland Territory. With Griffin and Putnam opening the hole, Tank Younger roars through the left side for 11 yards. This time, Van Brocklin sent Tommy Wilson crashing into the end zone for a Los Angeles touchdown. And this tied the score at 14 to 14. Keep your eye on this play as Van Brocklin connects on a pass to Bob Boyd. But the Rams speedster loses control of the ball. It goes out of bounds on the 20-yard line. One of the all-time greats in the National Football League is Elroy Crazy Legs Hurst. Here he takes a 20-yard pass from Van to send the Rams into a 21-14 lead. Late in the second quarter, Jim Brown rolled around the left side for 14 yards to midfield. But with five seconds left to play in the first half, Lou the Tolgrosa kicked a tremendous 48-yard field goal to narrow the gap to 21 to 17 in favor of the Rams. In the third quarter, Jimmy Brown fumbled a pitch out, and Art Hauser scooped up the ball, lumbered 29 yards to a Los Angeles touchdown. And this increased the Ram lead to 28 to 17. Cleveland came right back as Jimmy Brown broke through the middle, raced 33 yards to set up another touchdown. Milt Clement, quarterback for the Browns, hands off to Jim Brown, who crashed through the left side for a touchdown. And the score now, Rams 28, Browns 24. On one of the big breaks of the game, Van Brocklin dropped back to pass, was hit hard and fumbled. Don Colo recovered for Cleveland on the Rams' seven-yard line. On fourth down, Jimmy Brown powered his way through the middle for the touchdown. And this sent Cleveland into a lead of 31 to 28. Brown set a new National League rushing record in this game, gaining 237 yards. Here he breaks through in the fourth quarter for 46 yards to set up the final touchdown of the day. 
Lou Carpenter batters his way over the right side. And that makes the final score. Brown 45, Rams 31. The millionth Rams fan to pass through the turnstiles during the 57th season joined a crowd of over 52,000 who braved inclement weather to watch the Rams meet the Baltimore Colts in the final game of the season. The Colts with their sensational quarterback, Johnny Unitas, their crushing fullback, Alan Amici, and the biggest, toughest defensive line in football needed a win to remain at a tie for the Western Conference League. The Rams, now out of contention, took the field in the role of spoilers. On the first scrimmage play of the game, Unitas lost a long high pass to Ray Berry for 62 yards and a first down on the Ram 18-yard line. This time, Unitas throws a screen pass to L.G. Dupre for 16 yards and a first down on the Ram 2-yard line. After one play fails, Unitas connected on a lob pass to Lenny Moore for a Baltimore touchdown. And this gave the Colts a 7 to nothing lead. Later in the first quarter, Cochran added a 44-yard field goal to narrow the gap to 7-3. And as we pick up the action, Van Brocklin throws a screen pass to John Arnett. The rookie sensation streaks down the field for 61 yards and a touchdown. This gave the Rams a 10-7 lead. In the second quarter, Cochran added another field goal to extend the Rams' lead. As we pick up the action, the Dutchman connects on a pass to Marconi for 17 yards and a first down in Baltimore territory. Again, it's the combination of Van Brock and the Marconi on a pass play. The carry is for 11 yards and a first down on the Baltimore 10-yard line. Time running out of the half, Van Brockman connects on a pass to Crazy Leg Purge. Ten yards and a Los Angeles touchdown. Makes the score, Rams 20, Colts 7. Late in the third quarter, our field camera picks up the action as United back to pass, decides to run, goes up the middle for eight yards. Colts narrowed the gap on this play. Alan Amici drives through the right side for a Baltimore touchdown. It makes the score. Rams 20, the Colts 14. In the fourth quarter, Joe Marconi powers his way around the right side for 18 yards and a first down to the Baltimore 23-yard line. Playing the form that has made him one of the most feared receivers in the National League, Elroy Hurst takes the pass from Van. The carries for 23 yards and a touchdown. The Rams now lead by a score of 27 to 14. Late in the fourth quarter, Paige Cochran kicked a nine-yard field goal. And that extended the Rams' lead to 30 to 14. Coming up is one of the most unusual plays of the season. Coughlin kicks off to Cotton Davidson of Baltimore on the one-yard line. He starts to his right, then throws a long lateral pass diagonally across the field to Lenny Moore, who blazes his way for 92 yards and a touchdown for the Colts. narrowed the score to Rams 30 and the Colts 21. Time running out of the fourth quarter. Van Brocklin connects on a pass to Bob Boyd for 33 yards and a first down on the Baltimore 20-yard line.
This time, Van hits Marconi, who fights his way for 15 yards and another first down. The Rams closed off their scoring for the year as Van rifled a pass to Lamar Lundy for eight yards and a touchdown. Final score, Rams 37, Colts 21. Thus, the Rams ended their season with an even record of six wins, six losses. The Western Conference enjoyed its closest race in history. With three games to play, no less than four teams had a chance at the Western title. And during the season, the Rams could boast decisive wins over San Francisco and Detroit, the teams who eventually played off for the crown. In their other game against the world champion Lions, Los Angeles lost by only three points. Now let's meet some of the men who gave Ram fans another thrilling season. Here's head coach Sid Gilman. Defensive signal caller and linebacker Les Richter. One of the league's top safety men, Will Sherman. Outstanding linebacker Dick Doherty. Hard-running fullback Joe Marconi. The great end from Southern Cal, Big Leon Clark. Aggressive defensive back, Don Burroughs. The battering ram, defensive tackle, Frank Fuller. The league's speediest offensive tackle, Bob Fry. One of the NFL's top ground gainers, halfback, Tom Wilson. Unanimous all-pro guard, Dwayne Putnam. Versatile quarterback and former bonus choice, Bill Wade. Assure yourself of a good seat at all Ram games by purchasing season tickets. Mail your order to the Los Angeles Rams. 7813 Beverly Boulevard, Los Angeles, California. The Falstaff Brewing Corporation, brewers of America's premium quality beer, was happy to bring you extensive radio and television coverage of the Ram games during 1957. Falstaff is looking forward to the 1958 season when they will again bring you the Los Angeles Ram games on radio and television. Now, this is Bob Kelly, your Falstaff sportscaster, saying, see you at the Coliseum. <laughs>